let's just get something out of the way. Pronation is not a dirty word. In fact, it's the natural rolling motion of the foot with every footfall, which is key for not only absorbing impact, but springing you back into the air. So if someone tells you you pronate while running, give them a high five and keep running. But there is a problem when you over pronate, which is what this video is gonna be about. Over pronation is when your foot excessively rolls in and collapses, and that can lead to a whole host of problems. So in this video, I'll tell you the difference between the two, how to figure out your own level of pronation and what to do about it to build healthier, stronger feet and a smoother stride. And hint, it is not about buying orthotics or more supportive shoes. First, let's assess your level of pronation. Now, the best way is to have someone film your feet while running for a while from both the forward uh, position and from behind. But this little trick works pretty darn well for a quick self-assessment when, hey, you're doing this by yourself. Now, we can't do this in shoes, so ditch those guys and let's get barefoot. Now, I want you to set your phone up to film horizontally and in slow-mo on the floor or to low angle so you can see your feet. You're gonna stand barefoot for a moment and just assess your level of arches and notice them. There should be some curve and arch off the ground, but everyone's feet is a little bit different. Now I want you to jump up and down barefoot like you're jumping rope. As you jump up and down, we should be paying attention to what the feet and the ankles are doing and what's happening with that arch. And then we're gonna turn this into running in place, alternating steps back and forth just to simulate that running motion. Now, you're looking for a little collapse of each foot and a quick spring back. Healthy pronation should see a 15% or less collapse, which is deemed proper and normal. Footfalls should feel light and quick, and importantly, if you zoom out, there should be no collapse of the knee or hip either, because hey, we're not human protractors, we can't just guess 15% all the time. But this is what it looks like if you are excessively collapsing. Notice how the arch disappears and rolls inwardly altogether. The footfalls become a little heavier and less springy, and most importantly, you also see a collapse further up the chain in the knee and the hip. If you have a pair of shoes with some miles on them, you can also look at the wear pattern, but meh, this isn't always as obvious depending on the type of the shoe and the support and the tread. So now that we know our level of pronation, what do we do now? Well, have you heard the saying, if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail? Well, this is really important to keep in mind depending on who you're talking to about your foot-related problems. For example, if you're talking to a shoe store, their hammer is the different types of run shoes that they can give you. So they're gonna talk about the level of arch support and motion control as a way of solving this problem. Similarly, if you were to go see a podiatrist, they might have the same conversation around custom footbeds and orthotics. Now, I'm not throwing full shade here because these tools are helpful in getting you back into running in the short term, but they're not guaranteed to fix your problems in the big picture, which is really what's important. And if we just rely on those tools, we only lead ourselves down a road to weaker feet with potentially more injuries. First thing. While some people do have genetically flat feet, the majority of us really have weak feet. We've coddled our entire lives, not really giving them the opportunity to ever get strong and to naturally improve the arch and function of the foot. So yes, that means we need to spend more time barefoot. Now, if you are working from home, especially in the year 2020, there's no reason to be doing it in shoes. In addition to not wearing shoes, can you also spend more time working standing up? Can you create a standing desk out of a delivery box or some shoe boxes? Because I know you got some of those lying around. If you spend more time on your feet and you complement this by walking around in flat and unsupportive shoes, you can make big gains in the natural strength of your feet. And this should go without saying, you should not, and I repeat, never wear your supportive run shoes when not running. Pro posture tip, if you are gonna spend more time standing, let's make sure you're standing the right way that builds up your feet. Can you stand and lightly screw your feet into the ground with a little bit of external rotation? 
starting at the hip. This helps level the pelvis, winds up the whole system, and as you can see, it literally pulls your arches up off the ground. So yes, even the flat-footed can build their arches here. Can you supplement this time barefoot by working on foot and ankle specific exercises designed to strengthen the muscles and tendons in your ankles, arches, and toes? If you're not sure what I'm talking about, you should check out the entire library of specific foot and ankle workouts we have in the Run Experience app. You can download it by following the link in the description of this video and then tapping into the Injured Runner program. Ken, in addition to strength and working from home, can you also improve your ankle and hip range of motion? Because here's the truth. Many people who lack proper range here actually run and walk with compromised mechanics. Specifically, they tend to run and walk a little duck-footed, i.e. externally rotated, which can lead to an even greater collapse of the arch and more pronounced overpronation. Just by getting your feet straighter and your hips more open, you can make serious improvements with how your foot hits the ground. And if you want a specific video on this, Holly talks about it in this hip external and internal rotation video that you can also find on our channel. Speaking of, we have lots of great videos on strength, mobility, run form, gear reviews, and how you can stay motivated running each and every week. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one. Second thing, can you draw awareness to your mechanics when you fatigue while running? Because really, overpronation is not a binary yes or no thing. Kind of like your posture throughout the day. You might have started sitting or standing upright, shoulders rolled back, etc. But after a while, you might have sunk into a hunched position, shoulders rolled forward, chin jutting out, maybe even as you're watching this video. Well, it's similar with your feet. You might start running tall, hips forward with a crisp, light cadence, but as you fatigue, you lose hip position, your shoulders get stiff, and your cadence drops, and you see an increasingly exaggerated collapse of the foot and ankle with every footfall. Specifically here, this low cadence is really a problem, especially if you're someone who runs below to 80 to 85 steps per minute on one foot, because the longer your foot's on the ground, the greater the likelihood of overpronation and collapse. Not to mention, it just feels heavy and slow. So really, even if you pass the selfie video test that we did earlier, that doesn't mean you don't suffer from some overpronation later into your run, so you are not off the hook. A quick and important note on supination, which is when your foot rolls to the outer edges of your feet instead of inward. Similar to genetically flat feet, this happens only to a very small percent of the population. In fact, most of us who experience supination experience it probably due to an overcorrection of being in an overly supported shoe with too much arch support. Because these shoes support your arches so well, they don't allow for any collapse inward whatsoever, and they end up pushing you out onto the edges of your feet for harder, harsher footfalls and its own set of problems. That's why it's so important to start at the source, which is your body, your strength, and mobility practice, and your ability to maintain good mechanics for longer periods of time. Then and only then do we supplement with supportive shoes to help us achieve our goals. Because think of orthotics and supportive shoes like a pair of crutches you might use for a sprained ankle. You don't want to crutch around the rest of your life. You're looking to get off of those things as quickly and intelligently as you can. Well, same with these tools. We should use them as sparingly as possible, which for some of us might mean using them a lot, which is okay, but we always look to strengthen our feet to build an exit strategy to get out of them. Now, if that sounds good to you, and whether you overpronate or not, you should continue your foot strengthening journey with this video Coach Morgan put together. These exercises don't take long. You can even do them while watching the video or typing an email, and they make a big difference in your running, pronation levels, and for minimizing chances of injuries in the future. Well, that's it for me. You keep earning your miles. I'll keep filming. See you in the next video.